good. So welcome to this tutorial and um, in this video we're going to do some tutorials on ANOVA. Okay, remember we did discuss ANOVA in our um, in, in the class and we said that um, we use ANOVA to do to compare when, um, pop, two or more populations but when we have a two, a two when we have two population then the ANOVA is not different from T and since T is easier you tend to go with the T than using uh, ANOVA now, now, In this example, you have three. So in this example, we have three golfers, and um, they yield. Let's say they play the golf, and they yield some. Um, we want to check whether these three golfers yield the same distance, right, at the Achimota Golf Club. So to do that, you, for we sample five distances from each player's um, trial or each golfer's trial, right? So each golfer's trial. So in this case, the right thing should be golfer's trial. So they try it. And then we we recorded it. So player one, uh, two, five, four, and so forth. Player two has this readings and player three has this reading. So here we are to test whether there is or a significant difference in mean distances of the golfers at a significant level of alpha. Okay, so how do we go about this? We're going to use what we call ANOVA. Remember that I said in practice, if we want to conduct ANOVA, remember the assumptions that the um, the two, uh, the, in this case, the three uh, players are independent. In other words, their distances are independent of each other. In other words, player two's um, playing distance, right, or this distance, is dif uh, it does not depend on player one and, 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 and so forth. Now, then we also assume normality, right? that they all come from a normal distribution with what a common variance. So if you are to do this, you must first test whether the, these assumptions are satisfied, right? In practice, okay. So by here, because it's just an exercise, we just go on and assume that ANOVA is applicable. But in practice, if you go out, please make sure you test the assumptions before you apply the test. If the assumption is not satisfied, you have a better statistical method to use as in non-parametric statistics. So we'll see how this, um, how we, we are going to use uh, um, to how we will solve this uh, uh, problem. Okay. All right. So um, I'll start by saying that in this uh, problem, we're going to Okay. We're going to state our uh, null and alternative hypothesis. Right? What is our null um, hypothesis? Well, um, so here we state our null and alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis, there are three populations, right? So our null hypothesis, H naught, will be that we have mu mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to what? mu sorry, mu, mu3, right? Okay, then our h1 will be that h1 h1 is such that so h1 is such that um, mu i's so mu i not or 
equal. Okay. So they are all null equal. Okay. So that's our null and alternative hypothesis. Next, we we we, we um, state our test statistics for this test. So our test statistic. So we can say this is A. Okay. Then B is our test statistic. Test statistic. Our test statistic. So what is our test statistic? Remember here we said it's an F, right? And the F is the mean square between the samples divided by the mean square errors or the mean square within. Okay. Now, and what is the distribution of this test statistics? So we say that under H naught, under H naught, okay, this F is distributed as well, an F distribution with um, K minus 1 and then N minus K degrees of freedom, okay. Where, of course, here, K is what? Well, the... Sorry, um, where K, where um, where K is what the number of. Uh, I want to write number so. Where K is the number of golfers. Where K is or the where K is the number of golfers. Oh they are going together. The number of golf golfers, okay. And of course, n n n is the sample size, and n is n is the sample n is the sample size. Okay, so um, in our case, um, in in um, so here, okay, or in this case, k is equal to three and n is equal to what, 15, because there were three of them, okay. Which means, which implies that our f is now distributed as what, f, 2, and what, 12, okay. So that's uh, the distribution of our test statistics. Okay. But, we must, um, so what is our decision rule? So C, Decision rule. What is our decision rule for this test? It means we will reject H naught. So reject H naught if if the F we computed from tables is greater than F. Okay, zero point zero five. Remember. We want to test at what? Um, we want to test at 5% significance level. Okay. So then, so 2 and then 12. Okay. 2 and 12. Now, now the 2 and the 12. Of course, this we can read from table. So, if we read this from tables, the F um, from tables you can you can check this right, and if you check this from tables, you get um, three point eight eight five. Okay, so this one. If you, you go to the F distribution table 
you look for 005 and then you look for 005 and then you and this is 3.885 okay so it means if we compute our f and our f is greater than this we will reject h naught other than that we fail to reject right we fail to reject h naught So now that we know our decision rule, we now do our computations. So computations. In other words, we do this to find our, our test statistics. So how do we start this? Well, first of all, from the, if we go to the table, okay, we will need a sum of squares, right? So we need the um, the column totals, the um, the um, the number of observations. Of course, in each column we have five, right? And then um, the sums, sum squares, and so forth. So we we'll use that in order to find the SST and then SS um, SS um, SST. So here, for example, we know N one is five. Also N two is also five if we come here n three is also five okay and and then we find the means the means we add them so if i go back to my marker um we have n one to be equal to five um or let me say n one um to make it easier I'll say n1 is equal to n2 is equal to n3 and it is equal to 5, okay? Now, um, equal to 5. Then, uh, what about k? k is the number of golfers, 3, right? Okay. Now, our n, um, n is equal to n1 plus n2 plus n3, which is which which gives us 15 okay so we have all this um at our disposal then we need y bar one star which is the group the uh, the total for group group one okay the, no, the mean for group one if we want to do this it's just one over n one and then sigma y i j and this will be i moving from one so i moving from one to what n1 so what what does this mean it means we have a one over five one over five into bracket then we are two five four plus two six three plus and so forth until we get to what the last one which is two five one okay and this gives us two four nine Two. Okay. So we follow the same step, and then for y two, we will, we will get what we will get um, two two six point zero. Okay, and also y three bar dot we get or we get um, two um, zero five point eight. So we have our sums, okay, so our means and, 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 and so forth, so we move on. Next, we need some summations, so we need sigma, sigma y, i, j. Now, sigma, sigma y, i, j will be 254 plus 263 plus up to, um, up to 204 the last observation and this gives us um, 3405 okay 
And then we also need sigma, sigma y, i, j, all squared. Now, what is this? It means each of these squared, right? 2, 5, 4 squared plus and so forth. So we do the same thing as well, 2, 0, 4 squared. And that gives us 7, sorry. That gives us 7, 7, 8, and 7, 7, 1. Okay. Now, so with this, we are in a position now to find SST. We have enough information to find SST. Okay, so if you look at um, the notes I gave you, or, or what we discussed in class, XST is equal to what? SSB, the, with sum of squared um, between treatment and then sum of squared um, um, within treatment. So how do you find the SST? Well, the shortcut will be that we have sigma yij all squared minus 1 over n sigma sigma yij all squared like this. Okay, so what does this mean? It means we have 7, 7, 8, 7, 7, 1 minus 1 over 15 and then we have 3, 4, 0, 5 all squared like that. And this gives us um, if you do this, you get 5, 8, sorry, 5, 8, so 5, 8, 3, 6, okay. So that's, that's our SST. Now, then the next one that is easier to find is SSB. What is SSB? It's sigma i moving from 1 to n i um, then you have n i okay y cap i star minus y bar dot dot all squared okay so this one is y bar let me do it properly so this is y dot dot bar okay so there is this so how do we do this? Sorry, and this is K, so so this one should be K. Up to K, right? Up to K, okay. So this one we take n1 and all of them are five right so i can factorize five out i can factorize five out so the first one is just y bar dot minus minus that one and remember y1 was or two four nine right or two five nine two four nine point two okay oh two four nine point two minus let me scroll up. Minus y bar dot dot is all two two seven. So this is two two seven all squared plus the next one was all two two six. Y two bar is two two six minus or two two uh, two two seven. Okay, all squared plus and then we have a two zero five. Point eight minus two two seven all squared. Okay. Like that. Okay. So if we do this, if we compute this one, we get four seven one six point four. Okay. So therefore XSW is equal to what? XST minus what? XSB. And for this, we get what? 5836 minus 4716.4. And 
Once we do this, we get what? We get 119.6. Okay. So we have all our sum of squares. So we are in a position now to do to to um, construct our um, contingency. Sorry, no contingency, but we are um, the ANOVA table. Okay, so next we construct our ANOVA table, then we'll be in a position to what to compute S um, our test statistics. So let's see. So I create a table, right? And then I have source of variation. So this place will be source of variation. Source of variation. And then here will be sum of squares. Sum of squares. Then we have the degrees of freedom. So DF is the degrees of freedom. Then we get our mean squares, mean squares, and then you get your F. Of course, F, we, we've seen that to be what MSC over MF. So here, the mean squares we have between, which in some cases we can say treatment, and then here we have within, which can we can also say is your sum of square error and so forth. So in some books you see sum of square error. We have been using within and between, okay? But you should note all this. And this one will be total. Okay. So what are the sum of squares? For SSB we, we found out to be what? 4716.4 and then here was what? 1119.6 and then together they give us five, eight, six, three, six. The degrees of freedom, this is two, this is 14, K minus one, N minus K. So this one, oh, sorry, this is 12, not 12, not 14. So this is 12, and then together we get 14. Because there it is just what, N minus one, right? N minus one. Now, uh, what about the mean squares? We divide each of these, the sum of squares, by eight degrees of freedom. So when we do this, this one, for example, we get 2358.2. And then here, if you divide 119.6 by 12, we get 93.3. 93 okay. And then F is MSW, MS, MSB over what? M SW. So you divide this by that 2358.2 by 93.3, and then you get what? 25. So here it is 25.275. Okay, so we are done with our ANOVA table. Okay, so if I go around it, we'll have something like that. Okay, so not so good, I mean, with my drawing, but pardon me for it, but at least we know what is going on. So this is our ANOVA, and we know our F now. And remember, you see, so now that, if you remember our decision, our decision rule, if we recap our decision rule, decision rule, rule was that reject H naught, reject H naught if F is greater than F um, it was 0 0.05214 which is equal to, to 212 which is equal to 3.8 3.89 something like that okay so we will say that since F is greater than oh sorry let me say F which is equal to F which is equal to 25.275 is greater than F 
two, what am I writing for? It's two twelve. Okay, so this one is a, a comma two twelve, which is equal to three point eight nine. Yeah, we reject each other. We we so the decision is that you reject each other. Now, if you reject each other, what does that mean? We reject. We reject each note. Uh, so. So we say that we reject reject each not okay so first step now if we reject each note what does that mean so does the golf is have different different distances they have different distances okay now the so what this test is telling us is that the 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 golfers have different distances right okay so but what we don't know is whether it is player one or golfer one Whose distance is different from what and go for two or the other way around? Okay. Um, this is super. So, um, remember that in class I talked about postdoc test. So, this is a typical example where you need a postdoc test. We say that there are differences, right? But we don't know which difference it is. So, postdoc test. Or we, we we call it multiple more sorry we also call it multiple rig, multiple comparison multiple comparison okay. multiple comparison so what do we mean by this okay. So this will help us to now check which of these golfers is different, whose distance is different from the other. Now to do that, we are going to use what we call the least significant significant differences. differences. Called LAC. LAC or least this significant difference, so to speak, okay? Now, what does that mean? We are going to do like a t-test, okay? Because this is a multiple comparison, multiple pair comparison. So you take each, um, we take one, uh, player one, we compare his or a distance to um, player two, then we we'll compare player one and player three, then we compare finally player two and player three. So that's what we are going to do. So the least significant difference is of this form. So it's like y i dot okay, minus y uh, j dot okay. So we do this okay, and then plus or minus so this is t, and this t will be what? Um, under n minus k, right? n minus k degrees of freedom. So t n minus k alpha on two, alpha on two because it's a two-sided. Okay, and then here we have our m s w, and then we have one over n one n i, and then one over n j. Okay. So this is our least significant difference and this is what we are going to use to 
construct a confidence interval for the multiple comparisons test. So, if we do that, then it means um, we've constructed a confidence interval for the, for the difference in mean. Now, if this interval includes zero, then what it means is that y1 and yj or y bar y bar i is not significantly different from y bar j. Okay. But if it excludes zero, then we'll say they are quite significant. So we are going to take our our data and we are going to take each of these. Okay. Now you see this will be um, in, because n1 and n2 are the same, n1 is equal to n2, which is equal to n3, then it means this part will be the same, right? This one. This part will be the same for all of them. Okay. Okay. So the only thing we need is this. Then we compute that one, and then we can check for each of them. So let me, let's compute that part, okay. So here, we will read T, okay, N is 15, so T12 at alpha on 2. T12 alpha on 2 um, gives us what value? We have to go to a T distribution. Let me find the T distribution. Then you look for alpha, and let, we are using 5%, so... T, um, you take your your um, tables, you look for the T distribution, you look for 0 0.025 and that 12. Okay, and that 12. And if you do that, you get um, And uh, so you get 2.012. Or oh, let me see 2.012. So, alternatively, if I want to use uh, for, for those doing um, 240, okay, we, we can use our uh, okay, 975 because it is two sided 975. And then our DF is equal to 12. Okay, so 2.178. Okay, for, for this. 2. Point, let me see if I read this correctly. 2. Point, yeah, so 2.179. Um, yeah, from the tables, it's so 2.179. So, which is the same as what we have read from, from R. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, if we want to do just that part, okay, just that part, then we have what? We have 2.179, okay, then square root, MSW, we go to our, our, um, our table, MSW was what? Was 93. Okay. So this is 93.3. And then 1 over 5 plus what? 1 over 5. Okay. So if you do this, eventually you get what? If you do that part, you will get... Um, let me see. So you have 2 over 5 um, square root of... Um, nine nine three point three times so two um, divided by five, and I close my bracket. So six point one zero nine. Okay, and then I multiply by two point one seven nine. So this is thirteen point three one two. Okay. So the whole the whole of that part gives us. 13.3.312. Okay. So we take this. Okay. So now that we have this one, it's easy. 
now we Okay, so yeah, okay. So we have that part. So now we are going to take what player one and two. So player or golfer. Let me see golfer one and two. So comparison, we um, we can do. We can even do a table. Okay, and then we say player, players, and then one and two. So for one and two, the difference between y, y, i dot minus y, two dot, so y, j, sorry, y, j dot. So y j dot. What does that mean? It means we will subtract one. And what is the mean for that one? Okay. So we have um, we have two four two four nine point two minus what? Minus two two six two two six. So. Um, okay, let me okay, let me clean this and do it properly. And do it properly so that okay. So let's do it now. Okay, so um, let me see y1 dot bar minus y2 dot bar so if we do this we are going to get um 249.2 minus or 226 okay and this is equal to 23.2 okay. then the next one we take y1 star minus y3 dot star and this one we get 249 249.2 minus 205.8 and this one gives us 43.4 okay and then we do y2 we now compare y2 and y3 okay and that if we compare this we we are using two two six minus or two zero five point eight and that gives us twenty point two. Okay. So if we want to get our um, our confidence interval, just like we we stated it here, we are going to take each of these value plus or minus thirteen point one thirteen point one and three. Okay. So if we take, for example, one and two, okay, for one and two, the distance, sorry, the, the um, for one and two, sorry, I want to, I want to say player, so, or golfer, so one and two, one comma two. So there we have all. We have two three point two plus or minus thirteen point three one two. And then for one and three, we have two forty three point four plus or minus thirteen point three one two. Okay. And then um, two and three, right? Two and three. 
and then two and three, we have um, two and three, we have 20.2 plus or minus 13.312. So with this, we, we have our interval. So our confidence interval, confidence interval is now um, for, for each of these, you just add and subtract, okay, 13.2 uh, from each of them. Okay. So if you take the first one, if you take the first one, you subtract 13.312 from it, you add onto it, so you get 980, so your confidence interval is 988, okay, up to, up to 36.512, okay. Then the next one, the next one to, you have 43.4 minus or 13, Point three one two, you have um, thirty point eight eight, thirty point eight eight zero eight eight zero eight eight, and then um, you have now um, fifty six point seven one two, okay, and then lastly. Um, Lastly, you have 20.2 20 okay, So this one will give us 33.512 uh, And then over here we have uh, we, we subtract 20 from it And this gives us 6.88 6.88 so these are your confidence interval now if you look at this interval the question is does can we conclude that they are different well all the intervals are significant right they are significantly different from zero so what it means is that if you compare one and two one and two are not the same they are quite significant um, different okay one and three is also different and then two and three is also different so the all the three um golf is their differences are the, their distances are different now one more thing that we can if you want to select the the golfer with the highest distance or the who has the longest distance okay what we have to do is that we look at one and two. So if you check one and two, this is one minus two and it is positive. The difference is positive. If you go up here, the di we know that all the diff um, the confidence intervals are, what are um, significant. So you look at, compare go for one and go for two, the, the difference between their means is what is positive if it is positive then it means y1 has more distance in terms of the average than y2 that's why the subtraction is positive so it means i can rule go for one out okay sorry go for two i should say then i compare one and three one and three is also positive which means y1 is greater than y3 okay so then i can conclude that from these two lines that y3 y1 is what is the highest or the golfer golfer one has the what the um, longest distance okay on the other hand if i want the the one with the lower distance i compare one and two one and two uh, it's like why have uh, more distance than what y2 so i'll rule y1 out Okay, I come to Y1 and Y3. Y1 still have 
more um, distance. So it's like I rule Y1 out, and then I'm left it um, selecting between Y2 and Y3. I compare Y2 and Y3. It is also positive, which means Y3 is the smallest. Okay, so that's how you you use the LSD to to make a decision as to whether to select the least or the the, the highest um, 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 goal power. It could be any um, um, any uh, a preamble or any question at all. You can apply it in order to make a decision. Okay, so that that ends our discussion on um, ANOVA. And remember, we have done this and I've added the postdoc test. And I will give you some, um, uh, I'll point you to some examples that you have to do in the book, in the reference test. Thank you.